uh, I have no idea why, like, I, I'll tell you a little bit why I got myself into here, but it's, it's through a series of random events. But I work as a machine learning developer at Wrangle, which is a web consulting company. Um, so um, this is kind of kind of random how we uh, got into this paper. So um, this paper was recently published on archives um, on May 20, uh, 21st. So it's fairly recent. So um, the gist of it, I'm going to tell you the gist of it. It's basically, it is basically saying um, the second author of, of the paper is uh, Ian Goodfellow. So as you, many of you probably have, can recognize him. So he's the in, basically inventor of GAN. So um, I, I saw this, this posted uh, somewhere. So I, I, I shared it on Slack channel. And then uh, I was, Amir asked me like, if I like to present. Um, on, on surface, it seems a pretty innocuous paper. It's like, just like the gist of it is basically uh, we, we have applied the latest bunch of bells and whistles to, to GAN. And we get a re like, significant boost in, in the score. So I'm like, okay, this sounds simple enough. So as I go deeper and deeper into this, I realize like, what a what a stupid mistake I made. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, because I'm not I'm not an expert in GAN, uh, I I was I've been learning this for the presentation. So if um, any of you are like have better understanding of what I'm talking about, uh, so feel free to to basically contribute. And uh, the other thing is some of the uh, concepts like th there is a bunch of bells and whistles applied to to this paper. Uh, some of them are probably a little bit out of my depth. So if, if uh, any like such as like spectral normalization. So any of you have a, some good insight or intuition on exactly what it does, uh, feel free to to um, uh, basically to to add to the top. So um, that is okay. Let's start. So a quick. Um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a quick overview, and I'm going to show you a bunch of photos because it's GAN, and so it's always fun. Like GAN is always fun because you can see photos, and then I'm going to uh, uh, dive into each individual things that that this paper is employing, uh, and, and finally we can have some discussion. Um, okay, I just have a show of hands before I start. Like, how many of you have a, a basic understanding of GANs? All of you, most of you. Okay. So basic. <laughs> basic. <laughs> okay. Um, I, have, I have two slides that like, explains like the, the the basic intuition behind it. So just enough to 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 to, to move us forward. So a quick interview. Um, what the, the main contribution of this paper, uh, as far as my understanding, is it introduces self-attention mechanism, or in other words, call it some context called intra-attention mechanism. I'll explain what that is in a little uh, later. Oh, uh, another show of hands. How many of you have um, uh, are familiar with like attention mechanism? Basic again? Basic? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and this paper specifically applies to image generation tasks. Um, and they not only apply the self-attention mechanism, but they also apply um, this, um, this, this basically um, technique called a, uh, spectral normalization, because that was the state of the art uh, before this paper was published. And also there's some kind of um, special technique for, for, uh, for, for adjusting learning rates as, as you train the network. We'll get in that into the details. And the end result is it achieves state-of-the-art results. Mm -hmm. Uh, it uses two uh, metrics. The first one is called Frisch inception distance. Uh, in, the, the data set they're applying to is on ImageNet. And the second one is called inception score. So it's a little bit confusing because the fir for the first score, less is better. And for the second score, more is better. Bigger is better. And I will give you a, my, the best of my understanding of what, what, what those two scores means in, in a moment. So okay, with all that, let's start. Let's the first thing. Let's see pictures. Here are some of the latest uh, the pictures that I screen capped from the paper. Um, the the title of this this talk is was I had a had a subtitle which says finally 
uh, you can generate uh, dogs with distinct legs. That, that's, that, that's basically the, uh, I guess, the, the most intuitive understanding of, of, of what, I guess, the, one of the major contributions of this paper. Uh, I will show you, I, I managed to pull some results from the previous state of art paper <coughs> later, so you can see, uh, you can do a comparison that this slide will be repeated. And dog is here, um, and also let's pay specific attention to the, to the bird in here. And in here you can see um, distinct legs that is generated. Um, and here are some more examples. How many, how, how many of you have played with GAN before, like try to generate your own stuff? How oh, you have? Okay. So I, um, the GANs are really fun, but I, I just, I'm still trying to figure out how to make money. Like, because <laughs> you can generate Pokemon, but how you make money? That's another question, okay. So um, the problems that the paper was, uh, line was, uh, was sort of tried formulating is basically, um, existing GAN models, a lot of them are use uh, convolutional nets. But the problem with convolutional nets is they are good at the local features. Like you can, you can get pretty good details with like the fur of the dog with the conv nets, but when it comes to global features, something that, that requires like spatial relationship, uh, this is where GAN is kind of like um, fails at, like, like not really fails like, but you can't, you know, there are ways to, to get around this. Uh, but in general, it just feels like not natural and, and in, their term, in their words, statistically brittle. Uh, I'll get that into a little detail. Um, wait, is this the latest slide? Oh, okay. So it is, it is good at, like, say, generating something that does not have like very strong like spatial dependency like ocean sky and landscape but when you go into details such as animals that has very distinct features where um, you need to the model needs to learn like there are two legs that's, that's close to each other and with this position it, it sort of fails on that um, this slide is I put I uh, there's a bunch of things I put together and this slide basically poses a question that I don't have a very satisfactory answer to. I'm still seeking the answer to it myself, which is how, like, it, it seems like confidence, like just pure confidence, have the ability to, to interpret some, uh, like, uh, lo location dependencies, but it is not great. But how exactly is it doing that? How do we analyze that? I, I don't know. Uh, so if any of you have a good answer, feel free to let me know. So, Countless have a local receptive field. Um, according to the paper, long-range dependencies um, can only be processed. Um, actually, it's kind of embedded in several layers, so it can you can only start to process and get a grasp of after uh, features get passed through like several layers. What this leads to is basically, um, if your model is small, it may not be able to capture. A lot of the a lot of hidden special spatial features. Um, optimization algorithm may not be good at capturing cross layer dependencies, and it may be statistically brittle. And and even if you manage to generate some good images, but if you um, if there are like unseen inputs to try to get into it, or like try to put in the GAN system, and it might it might fail to to basically generate. Uh, uh, based on the, the, the new inputs. So one remedy is you essentially increase the kernel size of the convex. So intuitively this makes sense because you basically try to make it look for a bigger region. I think that, that, that is what it's trying to do. But there is a statistical, uh, 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 there is a computational and a statistical implication for that because it, it lowers the uh, the computational and statistical efficiency. Um, so that's just a photo of, of Kong Nets as a refresher. I think this is Alex now. I forgot, okay. So a quick refresher on how GANs work. Um, you, typically the, the analogy is basically you have people, you have people trying to counterfeit money and you have police that tries to, um, to, to detect the counterfeits. And 
as as so in this ex example, you have a generator that basically um, takes in a a z z is basically random sort of state the distribution as an input, and it try uh, and it takes also takes the data set, the input data set, the basically examples you want to generate as an input, and oh sorry sorry not not a generator it's a generate the input of a generator is basically the, the random state in a random state and you combine the output of the generator and the data set into the as the input of the discriminator and the discriminator outputs a zero one uh, label which basically says it's is this image that's generated by the generator real or fake that's kind of like how GANs work in a nutshell I think there and there is the um, then the next question is how do you define loss function? So loss fun uh, loss function, I will get that into a little more details. Uh, I, I think in theoretically, loss function is basically is trying to ach achieve some like something called like a Nash equili equilibrium in, in game theory. So that's the gist of loss function. So I'll give you a uh, intuitive understanding, like the best my best understanding of how it works in a few slides. And then there is the self-attention. Self-attention um, is also called an intra-attention. Uh, people have managed to achieve state-of-the-art results just by only using self-attention mechanism. Uh, um, and it is a better balance between uh, uh, like the long-range dependency and, 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 and basically uh, the efficiency of the models. Uh, so, I guess the the other solution is probably you just, you just do like fully connect, connected layers, but that's probably computational so computationally slow. I think that that's what it's trying to, s to say here. Um, it takes into consideration features from all positions. Uh, in the in the in the example of uh, in the in the case of speech. Or, or sequence models, it takes in the position. Uh, it takes into account the uh, the the features of, of all positions. But in the case of image, uh, say if, if it's introduced in like in the convolute convolute layer, it takes it into consideration the entire feature map of that layer. Um, weights in this case uh, is 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 equivalent to is based another way of saying is is called attention vectors. And it has relatively small uh, calculation cost, <coughs> and the other advantage is it could yield to uh, yield more interpret interpretable results. Uh, I will show you in the next slide what that means. And the paper claims that it, it, it is a good complement to 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 the ability in, in confidence. So this is what I mean by interpretive. Yes. So I didn't understand what the self part of this is like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That good mean? question. So self comes to the fact that um, it, it will become clear when, when we see the equations. But um, just quickly, self in, implies that you uh, apply the um, the attention back to the sequence itself. I, I think I think that, that that's that's how it, like in in this case. Oh sorry, in, it's not sequence. It's the um, the attack, the feature map. So instead of, as opposed to um, say, you get attention from only the inputs, encoded inputs. In here, you basically you you also get inputs from. Uh, so you're trying to focus on a particular a particular part of your sequence, but you also take that s sequence itself as the input. I think that's where the self attention comes from. Okay, I, I, I think I'll get into more details later. So this is a very intuitive understanding of, uh, give you an intuitive understanding of what self-attention mechanism can, 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 can do. So what is happening here is each color, like say the, uh, the cyan or the red color capture, uh, corresponds to some attention region in, in a feature map. So each, each color, uh, captures a different aspect of, of the image almost. So you can see um, the, 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 we have two examples, uh, top and, 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 and down. On the first row, the first image is 
the attention region that was computed by the, I think, how it's computed by the last layer of the um, attention map. And then each of the subsequent images basically uh, gives you a idea on which regions it's actually paying attention to. So say for the red dot on the, on the dog image on the top, it primarily concerns itself with the eyes of the dog. You can roughly see that. And, and the green dot concerns itself with, with, with the mouth region. And um, where's the, the, the cyan dot over there? It concerns itself with, with, with the, um, the background. And as you can see, it is able to interpret, like say the cyan arrow is, 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 is very long. I'm not exactly clear how the arrow is drawn is that was not very clearly written in the paper. But I think what it's trying to show is basically uh, I am be, I'm able to infer long range dependencies. Like even if, it, it, it cross, it, if it's uh, the two spots of the image, uh, the two things I pay attention to are, are, are at a distance. This is what it's basically trying to, uh, trying to, trying to show. Um, so what are each of the columns? Like a different layer or? What is like? What are the, each of the columns? Each of the columns is a single. I think it's a single feature. Is each one a single attention head? Or oh yeah, you're right. A single attention head. What does that mean? Uh, it's just uh, the attention mechanism. You replicate it n times, and you get n heads out of it. Each one attends to a different. Uh, thing. Yeah, there's a yeah. yeah. You're right. <laughs> Okay, so here is the map. Um, this is a, a, a these formulas come from from, from the paper, so I'll, I'll try my best. To, I'll try my best to explain this. So this is, this is called a basically you call it a tension unit that is applied to uh, uh, to to uh, to comments. Oh, uh, sorry, to it, it can base pretty much apply to everywhere in, in your in your. Uh, uh, in your model, it doesn't. Uh, it, you can apply it to arbitrary a layer of comments, but this is a basic unit. There is also a generalization sort of of, of, of this model in a paper. It, this paper refers to is called a non non local neural nets. It has a, like mathematical generalization of what it does. Um, I don't claim to understand the entire piece of it, but I'll just walk you through of what is going on. So in here, the x is a um, is a, I think n represents the <coughs> number of attention heads that they're referring to, the, 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 the number n. And c is, is, I think, is number of features. So x is basically, ca it, x is not necessarily the input, it can be a input from a, uh, a features from, a, from the previous layer. So that, that is what, what x represents. And so we do a, uh, on, on the top level, we do a um, F, G, and H. Like so, basically, it, it passes through three, uh, kind of like like uh, three kind of uh, fun uh, three uh, one by one convolutional layer, Pro presumably as a means of uh, there. There are certain benefits of a one by one convolutional layer. So one benefit is, is probably like you can get some kind of regularized regularization out of it, and there are other like uh, um, other benefits include. Um, Dimension reduction, and uh, so there, there are articles or uh, like talks specifically about why one by one comp layer is is, is, is beneficial, but uh, it's not clear exactly why they put the one by one comp layer in there. It's probably it's just it's tried it and, and it gets better results. Um, the reason you have three, I'll explain why. So it. Basically, it, 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 it gets passed to, uh, like on top two, it gets passed to F and G. And the, the X over there with the, with, the, with the circle means matrix multiplication. So it does a matrix multiplication, and it try to basically normalize it and with the soft max, and then uh, uh, on, on the top right, uh, top right get a tension map. And at the bottom, it, it, it tries to um, make it go through this um, one by one column layer again and it gets a matrix called H, a WH, 
and then it tries to do matrix multiplication with the attention map that is generated. So eventually, you get the output. It's called self-attention feature maps. So what, why, why is it doing that? I think this partially comes from a framework uh, from the uh, non-local uh, neural network layer. So uh, I, I will have an, a more generalized photo at the end of the reference, so we can take a look at that again. But here, intuitively, the reason the bottom H is basically saying, uh, I'm not only taking into account, like my attention is an input of, of, um, of the sequence my, like my, myself. If a sequence, like uh, if the sequence, uh, oh sorry, not a sequence, the uh, feature map itself. That's what HX is saying. So FX and GX is basically, um, I think it's basically saying if you have a, um, um, a GX basically represents we want to take into consider consideration all features in this complex, but not locally. This is opposed to a uh, regular ComNet feature where I only concern about the, um, the kernel size, like, like the, the range within the kernel size. But in here, G, uh, G of X actually is, is a sum over basically um, everything in the feature. I think that's, that's why it has that, that clear separation. Does that make sense? So I guess not. So F, G, and H have different kernels, or are they the same? F, G, H have different I think they have different kernels. <coughs> uh, let me, actually, let me, let me go back to the, uh, the more general framework and see if, if that makes sense to somebody. So this comes, I included this slide in the last, uh, in the reference page. So this is a more generalized version of what, what we, we just saw. This is from the, the other paper. So what is basically saying is, is the same thing, but the, the notation here is, is a little, Confusing. I think in here G was the X that we saw, and in here we have theta and, 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 and phi here. So this is, I guess, this is just a generalization. So this is basically saying we are taking the input itself, uh, we are taking the, the uh, sequence or the feature map itself as the input, and we apply that to the to the to the attention map we we we, mul we multiply here. So together with the attention map we computed and the input feature, and then we can get it output. Yes? So can we go to the last slide? Previous slide? Yeah, the last one. So F and G are uh, generated, they are contributing to generate. And F is, uh, F and G do the attention. Oh, sorry, the, the, the G here it has nothing to do with generator and discriminator. So this unit, can be applied to both generator and discriminator. It's, yeah. Okay. But from the, this, the diagram, if uh, can I say that F and G are they are giving attention? They are feature spaces. F and G. Yeah, they are feature spaces. Yes. And giving some attention map, and H works as discriminator on that attention map to give the final output. Can you say the last part again? H works as discriminator because H is combined with uh, attention map. So that that that's again yes. multiplication, not combination. Not combination. <coughs> no, no, no. <coughs> I think so. I, I can kind of understand the top part. Like okay. that's like do a ker like F and G are two kernels, and then you transpose it and multiply them. So that's how you capture long range interaction because essentially. That multiplication is grab a vector from this, right. grab a vector from this, add them up, and right, right, right. hit one number, right? Mm -hmm. So that, and then go through soft mics, get, get the attention map. Uh, so that one is a square matrix, right? <coughs> the attention map? Yeah, C by C. That's right, that's C by C. <coughs> and then multiply it by the lower one. I don't understand what the lower one I guess that's it is, it another. Is a, it, is C by C. it is also C by C. What is C by C? The lower uh, the H. H is also C by C. So oh, okay, so everything is C yeah. by C. No, uh, F and G are from. Uh, they are F and G. X is from C by N. So W H the the weight matrix the parameterization of H is C by C. 
but h is uh, that weight matrix times x, which is the input. So um, h of x is c by n. So the attention map is, uh, what's, what's the result? The attention map is, is what's the dimension? C by n. N by n. Yeah. N by n? N by n. N by n, yes, okay. And h is, uh, let me see, h, where's h? h is c by n? n by n times c by n. I think the other slides show the dimensionality pretty yeah. well. Do you go to the other one? The, 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 the one the very last one. slide, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looks like the output from f and g is uh, thw by 512 and 512 by thw. So you get <coughs> c by c or out of that. And then the output of what was h on the previous slide is t or c by n. So c by c combined with c by n gives you c by n. Yeah, c by n. Is that just c by n? Which makes sense because you haven't changed the, uh, mm -hmm. the dimension of your input when you get to the output here. The attention is right. just acting as uh, the selection mechanism or a oh, waiting mechanism okay. on that. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. So and then the purpose of H is to put the dimension on the back. Sorry, what was the comment? I was just asking if that was the purpose of, of H to. Uh, bring the dimensionality of the output back to the same dimensionality of the input? Yeah, okay. yeah that, that's good. Yeah. Could you go to the last slide? Just want to make sure that's okay. it. Uh, oh, no. No, so I think it stays the same, but I think what, what H does is sort of grabs the local attention because as Amir said, the other one does a major multiplication, so you get more of a uh, like broader mm -hmm. uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Actually, I, I think um, I mean, H is actually the query. Like, it was just called a query, you know, the tension. The query? Yeah. So, um, <coughs> so th this is basically saying for, ultimately for each feature, like H is basically like, kind of like the overall, um, I forgot the serialized like space is like for each of the query, uh, for each of the feature map as my query. And what what would be the um, the feature map like self like the, the calculated self attention feature map look like? I feel like I this would, abstraction of it. I feel like this would be clearer if we left the one by one convolutions out and we just treated it as um, f and g act as uh, long range dependency detector. So you can yeah. see how every part relates to every other part. Mm -hmm. H is just essentially the original uh, convolutional feature maps you received your input pass through some linear transformation, mm -hmm. and then it's just your attention that captures the dependencies, map back onto your original input, measure output. Mm -hmm. I think the convolutions, I know what they're trying to do, but they <coughs> confuse this uh, diagram. Mm -hmm. But that second multiplication is not an element-wise multiplication, right? Because the dimensions are, are different. Dimensions are like, uh, yeah. F, F is the C by C, G is C by C, and when F and G are Combined the output is C by C. Right. Uh, attention map is C by C, and with H, when it is multiplied C by C into C by M, it makes <coughs> the output C by M. Yeah, yeah. I understand okay. that, but uh, what I'm saying is that the dimension of the attention map yeah. and H of X is not the same. So it's not a. It's not like pixelized attention, but right. it's to capture all the dependencies. Right, but the thing is that you're still, again, summing over all, all the pixels or, you know. Uh, so that's like I, I'm tempted to think of the way you're, you're describing it, but the fact that you're summing all all, or all <laughs> over the, the pixels, you know, but it's still yes. Perhaps the attention map does the part that he showed in the uh, previous slide to the, this the, slide, the, the picture, the regions, the eyes yeah, and this part. Mm -hmm. Attention map does does this part. Attention map does this part. Yeah. So attention to particular parts, regions, and then when it is multiplied to H, we get the output back. But um, my question is, is this, um, 
So this particular arrow is computed with a combination of H? Uh, not exactly arrows. Arrows could be like uh, just for indications, uh -huh. maybe, because uh, uh, otherwise the highlighted region in each shape column that shows the weight because of the weights, uh, because of the attention, attention, uh, mm -hmm. elements of the attention C by C, like this is C by C, this uh, all elements of C by C matrix, then focuses on these different regions. And when you again, you wish to get back some output, you multiply with H and you get the picture. I think this is, I could be wrong, so, are you, so my understanding from papers, this is basically, let's say if you have a, a attention map, right? And you, you point at a particular point mm -hmm. in, in a picture, and then uh, if it's a particular point, then you, 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 you can compute a region yes. based on a particular point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is attention to different regions, mm -hmm. and that's what attention map has done. Okay. And uh, when you multiply with H, one more feature space that you have taken initially, F, G, and H, mm -hmm. the H, you get the original picture, as he said, uh, back. Mm -hmm. and because this is not, none of this is giving you the original picture, right? This is the attention map part. And when you multiply with H, you get the original picture. Or the picture uh, that is a, 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 that has output <coughs> you get. Uh, that's my understanding. Yeah. I, again, I could be wrong. The way yeah. that I'm interpreting it, this is the first time I've seen it, so I could be wildly off track here. But if you go to the back to the next slide, once you've computed the attention map, which is C by C, um, I'm interpreting that as um, uncovering the relationships between every uh, pixel in the image and every other pixel. H underneath, um, H of X, uh, decides for this particular um, head, for this particular um, uh, N, I'm not sure what to call it in this case. Feature? Uh, yeah, each particular feature map uh, from the... Oh, for each particular head. Um, H okay. of X does a transformation to indicate uh, which feature or which pixels you are mostly focusing on, and then you pass that back, or you combine it with the, um, the pixel, cross-pixel, um, I don't even know what to call it, attention map, saliency map, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the relationship between all the pixels, and it will tell you, given that you chose to find these pixels important, we're now going to br bring in all the pixels that we feel are related to those pixels. That's my interpretation. Well, I think the attention map is N by N, not C by C, because uh, no, really. if you see the fx is double fx, that means uh, it's beyond R, C hat, multiple N, right? We, we will go back to the F transfer multiple Gs, uh, means F transfers N multiple C hat. G is C hat multiple N, so the multiplication would be like a N multiple N. Uh, I think the ends are internal to that. I think it's C by C. Um, attention map is C by C? <coughs> the attention map, or, or C hat by C hat. Uh, uh, no, um, I think C hat cancels each other all the way, so you then get a C by C. Right on the board, see if it's, uh, you do have the N. Can we record this? Yeah. Right. If, if it is considered as but this transpose thing because in uh, in uh, linear vector linear algebra yeah. they consider uh, a vector as column vector also. So in that case if you do the transpose it will look like vector. In my in matrix algebra, linear algebra, mm -hmm. in uh, some standard books they consider a vector as a column vector. Okay. So if you do the transpose, it will become a row vector. So that's not, not a Python. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you go, uh, yeah. Because uh, if it is in that terms, because this is mathematics, that's why. Uh, maybe if you move on, it gets yeah. clear later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is the exciting slide. We're very into it. <laughs> okay, we, we can go back. We can come back. So we can go back. And the final output is, uh, so you, you get the, um, Atten self attention feature map denoted by O. Um, gamma, you, you get you get this formulation. This is the final output. Uh, so, for each of the feature i, uh, indexed by i, you get gamma times uh, the, uh, the 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 computer self attention feature map plus the original input. Um, gamma is initialized as zero. So the on the paper is basically saying the intuitive 
um, justification is, is essentially, uh, with, with all this effort we have computed, but initially we want to set it to zero because we want the network to, to be focusing on local, easier to compute features first. So a, as, you, as you train the network, like go through more and iterations, then the, I think the network, it, because it's a parameter, the network figures it, uh, figures it out on its own and, and can basically adjust the, 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 the rate of the rate gamma, a uh, gamma on its own. So, and then there's the loss function. And <laughs> I probably don't know how like explain this, but I'll, I'll give you my interpretation. The loss function is um, the discriminator function. F the loss for discriminator is the same for all kinds of uh, GAN networks. So intuitively, what is the, what this doing is it takes loss from two sources. The first source is the uh, the the input the example and data you give to it. Uh, you, you give to it, and the second part is the um, is the image like like computed this like the computed image that's that's gener uh, of the result uh, of computer result of the image that's generated from the generator and the loss for the generator I think intuitively you can see it as basically I take a loss whenever the discriminator tells me um, this is fake you can roughly interpret it as this uh, does that make sense? Okay, let's move on. And this is the part that where I'm out, I'm out of my depth. So spectral normalization, it claims to apply the spectral normalization, and the end result is you, you get... Um, so the end result is, is basically you get a more stable, like, uh, uh, training, uh, a training epochs. And, and also, it, it, it does not require any extra hyperparameter tuning. It basically, uh, it all comes down to one single hyper hyperparameter. I think it's called a Lipschitz uh, uh, constant. Could this, does anyone have any more to add to this? Okay, I, I, I tried to parse that paper, that paper, but it was too math heavy, so couldn't do it. And and then it also in, and also it employs this um, this technique called in, uh, TTUR two time scale learning rate. This is the same paper, uh, the si the paper that proposed it also proposed the uh, FID score uh, that this paper is using. So um, the end, re end result. So the, the intuition is basically instead of applying a single learning rate to both the generator and the discriminator, you apply to sort of like two separate learning rates. I think that's the uh, um, higher level intuition behind this. And the finally, here's the uh, score it is computing. So it, it, it picked two scores. The, the, the first one is, is called inception score. The second is, is called a free shade inception distance. The reason they picked the first one is because they, they say, they basically claim this is every, what everybody's converging to. So it's easier for them to compare the results, the experimental results. Uh, it is defined as the uh, Kubak labeler divergence, uh, divergence between the uh, conditional class distribution and mar marginal class distribution. And intuitively, if you get a higher inception score, uh, uh, supposedly better image quality, but there is a paper that criticizes, like, is this the really, really the, a good score to, that we're aiming at? Um, so. That's the, the first, so for inception score, the higher is better. And for FID, uh, the, the lower is better. Like FID is basically a more principled approach. It's basically trying to, to, to actually compare between generated images and real images on the, um, when, it, when you apply the image to the inception V3 net, uh, network, it tries to try to compute the distance of the feature maps. But is this a good measure? I don't know to answer the right question. But the, claim, the paper claims it's a more principled approach. So experiment, uh, the, the output is the, 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 uh, the output is 128 by 128 images and uses spectral normalization and the um, learning retuning I, I just mentioned. 
and it uses two different learning rates for, for discriminator and generator. And here's the, um, they, they divide, they, they, the way they did the experiment is, is basically they first used a baseline, which is spectral normalization on the discriminator, disc, discriminator only. The reason they use that is because it's a baseline of the state of the art. So that's what the state art was using. But as you can see, the, um, as you go through iterations, the score tends to fluctuate a lot. The reason is because they're not using exactly the same condition uh, from the original paper. From the original paper, um, the GANs have this problem where uh, if, you, if you do a one-to-one uh, one one ratio uh, to train discriminator and generator, sometimes you get like instability. So one way, one workaround people find is basically you do a something like six by one ratio. So basically for each update step for the generator, uh, uh, for six update steps of the generator, uh, you only update the discriminator once. But they, they try to move away from that. They say, they're basically saying we're, we're trying to do one by one. Uh, and so that's why the, the, the result of the um, of their baseline like looks very uh, very unstable, but it was not the case in the original paper. So they 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 are doing one by one ratio like across all their experiments. Uh, so this is the uh, to, to the the image on the on the top left is the image generated when it's captured at a ten k iteration. So as you can see, um, it's yeah it, they don't. You, you can look, you can see some of the, um, they look r real, but you can see there, there's a lot of, um, I, yeah, I, I, I guess, I, I'm not sure actually what it's, it is generating. But, <laughs> but um, when applied, when you, so what, what the one contribution uh, of this paper is basically saying, instead of applying spectral normalization on only the discriminator, which was the original paper, was doing, let's apply it to both the generator and the discriminator. And I'm still retaining the one-on-one -on -one ratio, like the ideal one-on-one -on -one ratio. And let's see what happens. So to the right, you can see like uh, iterations at 10K, 160K, and 260K. So those are the results. Uh, they, they seem to get uh, much uh, better images. But at some point, the um, Probably due to overfitting, uh, the FID and inception score stop, started to deteriorate. Uh, so that's the kind of like second attempt, and finally here's the third attempt. The third attempt is 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 by applying not only special normalization of both generator and discriminator. I'm also I they also apply um, different learning rates for discriminator and generator, and then it it, it results in a uh, much smaller. Um, uh, training curves. So they stop at one million iteration. So that's what what he what he said in the paper. And so, yeah. I mean, if you have a dog, do you get four legs? That's not clear in these images. That's not clear. I mean, do you get a dog with four legs, for example? Do you generate <laughs> dogs with four legs? Or? Sorry. Do you generate dogs with four legs? Do you generate dogs with four legs? Yeah, or uh, he said it the count is wrong in the original uh, again. So, okay, let's see the dog here. Yeah, um, <laughs> the images look better, but... Uh, I, mean, I, I don't, you know, one thing is, like, I don't, I don't yeah, know. All, all the images are usually small. Because <laughs> yeah, that's... The, because the, the if exact you make it light, the, the aspect you directly discover... Good point. Uh, Good point. The, the examples they give, like, seems like, okay, there's dog, there's bird, there's cat. They have like very good separate legs, but I, I, but in this case, I don't know what is actually generating. Is this a dog? Yeah, that's a dog. Can you see legs? I'm not sure. I, 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 there are more pictures to come. So um, this is another. Okay, so th this this is basically saying that they're trying different things. The baseline is no attention. And the two rows represent two scores. We, we just mentioned the uh, free share inception distance and the inception score. Um, feet, feet 8, feet 16, feet 32, and feet 64 basically is, uh, is uh, the, um, the attempts are the attempts to apply 
atten that attention block we talk about onto different layers, convolutional layers. So the result, um, and I I'll explain the, the residual part later. So the result is basically, um, they found that if you apply the attention on mid to higher layers, you tend to get the best result. But so, in other words, if you if you apply attention to, to very lower la layer that captures like very small features, very detailed features, they tend they tend not to to uh, they tend to, to to be worse. So this is what it's trying to say. And then for the residual part, what they're doing is basically saying if I just take out the uh, attention block and I replace that with the, the residual block, like uh, from like ResNet, um, I get worse results. And this is basically saying with everything else equal, uh, our our me method is at least much better than residual blocks. I think this is what he's trying to say. So it, it tries to basically saying there's some um, like merit with the like current state of art, um, like, like other other um, other uh, other architectures that are that that perform really well. Um, and he, the SNGAN projection is the, um, the state of art that employs uh, spectral normalization. So the claim is, is for inception score, it's a, the claim is a significant boost from 36.8 to 52.52. And FID, similarly, because FID is lower, is better. So they also perform uh, much better. Uh, and here are some of the photos. I, I managed to dig, dig these out from, from the uh, previous state of art, uh, the, the repository from previous state of art. Here are some photos from the uh, previous state, state of art work. So yeah, I, I think there are dogs with legs over there. But in, in some instances, some of the legs maybe gets mixed together. They only they only apply to dogs and cats. So, that's <laughs> okay. Here's another slide of dogs. Oh no, sorry, that's a fox. <coughs> I say it's, it, generally speaking, it's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the. This a purveyor state of art. I mean, current state of art. What's wait, which one? It's a purveyor state of art. Not not the. This is the not the yeah, this is a previous state of art. Yeah. yeah. So they c but the, the claim is that you can't generate good legs. Yes. That, that, that's the claim. Well, uh, this I could. <laughs> this this is a good so. thing. So that, that's a big part about it because the, the image, um, they recently, someone implemented their model, but I don't think anyone has managed to actually generate fresh examples other than what the paper has provided. So this is what we have. This is basically what we have. This is the, um, the, the this is the image generated from the um, from from this paper from the modeling this paper. I think if you focus on like lat legs and, and like long range features, you should probably just, um, come up with a different metric to measure that. But I I still haven't figured out what's the relationship between that and and FID and inception scores. Seems to be better at birds than it is with dogs. Yeah. yeah, but the original so didn't have many, many, <laughs> many birds. In, in previous slide, it could be seen easily. The legs are not uh, derived well. You can see the legs, separate legs of the fox. Uh, they are like uh, stretched and thin. Uh -huh. all, almost oh, yeah. all the legs. They yeah, there seems to be like five legs. Even, even the dog in okay, the yeah. center, it is there. Its legs are also prolonged. So, yeah, it could be. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I, w I wish there's more like a more, like a more scientific or so principle good measurement. So from the third column from the left and the second row from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a <laughs> cubic design. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this could be the result of overfitting. That's why they have adopted spectral regularization because spectral regularization helps uh, spectral normalization uh -huh. helps to normalize and normalization. Uh -huh is used to um, prevent overfitting. So, so in general, with could be. My experience again is that if they work, they're very impressive, but most of the time they don't work. 
And uh, this kind of image is very really dangerous to present in a paper. So if you see some pictures are very similar, like look at the, uh, in the first column to the left in the middle, it's like the front facing dog. So what they do, they have like a input vector which makes a good picture, and then they just do slight alterations of it to make slightly different images. And it will look really good in the so paper. So they, they try different values of Z until they find something that's good. No, they have a good Z. Close by Z. And they have a good Z, and then they add a very small error to each of the Z values, generate 500 images, and then take from the f or take generate 20 images, and then from the 20, you take the one, the three or four that look good. Could you go to the next slide? So here, uh, I have that same question. Let's say St. Bernard. If I want to generate St. Bernard's, I could go through my photos until I find a Z vector that generates a St. Bernard, mm. and then just apply a small amount of stochastic noise to that to move it somewhere. Yeah. And it's likely that I'll still be in the range of latents that produces St. Bernard's. And if I'm in the range of good St. Bernard's, it'll still probably produce good St. Bernard's. Well, and, but I, I was curious about. But if I a priori just want to create a Saint Bernard and never found one before, I don't I don't see an easy way for any of these to do that. Are these not are these not labels that would be included in the, the training data? Like would the training data not have a ton of data on Saint Bernards and then Well it, it might for the generator because the only input is that latent space finding Saint Bernards in the space of everything that the network has learned how to there's generate. There's no other input, like there's no I've, I've read. I've read about like GANs that actually actually takes the input at the, the the text input as as the input. Yeah. But I'm not sure that if that's the one they're using. So you can no. add as an additional input to the GAN as a class label. Yeah. You can do it as well. I think this is most likely what they did. So I, I assume they did. Ben, Saint Bernard's and then they got the Saint Bernard's and added some random noise. But as also <laughs> clearly you see here, it's always <laughs> the same picture essentially. It's like a very front facing. Picture, so it's more impressive. It's like, like for the birds, for the red shark, it's actually more more interesting because one time it's like left facing, one time it's right facing. So mm. also depends a little bit on the data you have when you, when you train them all, right? Variations. So how much variation are on the same Bernard pictures? Mm -hmm. And also for the same Bernard, it has a very distinct pattern in the face. So most likely this is what it captures the most. So based on your experience, like how does it like so you for each of these class, you basically you, you, you train them from scratch. Is that how it works? No, you, you basically you have it's like what you showed in the sketch. So the traditional GAN you just add random you put random noise in right. and you get your real image out. And uh -huh. uh, the story behind GAN is that the idea was conceptualized in a bar after a conference. Yeah. And there were like a big argument between I and Goodfellow and someone else if they can do it or not and if you think about it, it's very surprising that it works at all. You just have random noise and you get your images out. And then the next stage of GANs was oh, you add the noise vector and some features, right? And the features mm -hmm. can be anything. The features can be even the class labels. And then basically what happens is a little bit, if you have on the class label, the random noise will generate images similar to the class label. So this, um, I try to dig into this because the the um, the paper itself does not uh, say uh, the architecture of the GAN. Their GAN, uh, they're basically saying we're using um, the architecture from this other paper. So I, I dug into the other paper, which is spectral normalization, and I I kind of got lost. I I couldn't find where it is. So yeah, that's 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 another question I'm wondering myself. So sorry, did I go? Why, yes. why they're using how how does spectral normalization help in what sense? Do you know? Um the it's like, uh, it, it, it well spectral normalization what it does, um, intuitively I could be yeah. Yeah. You uh, want to As I said, I uh, learned about that that it is a non a regularization technique uh -huh. adapted to reduce the overfitting. Yeah, but how in short. And they they works like somewhat like this. Um, this yeah. spectral normalization is uh, technique is applied on the weight weights. By W. Yes. Yeah. It is applied on that, and it uh, works on the W matrix to normalize them. And there are very com big formula for that. Mm -hmm. it, uh, they are just matrix operations. 
I mean, you divide, but I just gave it the spectral norm. But how does this? It's basically saying the original period system, we're just setting the spectral norm, literally setting it to, to something. That's how they normalize. I think that, that I remember that's what people are saying. If I put my physicist hat on here for a second, <laughs> I assume uh, in a spectral normalization, what you're trying to do is to filter a high frequency noise out of your image. So essentially don't generate white noise. Yeah. Generate things that have a spatial correlations that are longer. You know, like essentially what you were saying in one of the images, like if you go back, yeah. uh, like uh, second row from the bottom, second from the left, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at the spatial, like the Fourier transform of that, mm -hmm. that's very strong peaks because it is going very quickly from bright to dark, etc. So with spectral normalization, you're trying to damp those down and have like very smooth changing yeah, features. Ex exactly. So uh, like in the, uh, where there is regression in it, do, because of spectral normalization of the waves, uh, the lines become smooth. Yes, sir. That's it. Okay, but these are already uh, have spectral normalization applied to the generator. These images, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like. Uh, the, the the paper this paper goes even further. They apply it to discriminator as well. Right. But I'm okay. All right, let's let's move on. Then. Um, so this is this is kind of a repetition of, of what you've already seen. So uh, some more at attention map uh, visualization. Um, it, what the paper mentioned is like for. Like for in, you know, for the first example, the red dot focuses on the body of the of the bird, and the green dot focuses on similar regions, like a, like to the left, both the right side of the bird, and finally the um, purple dot focuses on, on on the tail. So that's that that's where the interpretability comes from. So it, this seems to to make intuitive sense when we are observing the um, the, the attention uh, generated attention maps. And here are some papers that I have, that was referred to by the uh, the author. Um, first of all, is the original uh, GAM paper, and the second one, uh, Goodfellow also has a 52-page tutorial on on uh, how to, um, basically a lot of aspect of GANs. So if the original paper is, is difficult, then you could look at his uh, tutorial and. Attention is, is all you need is also a paper published by Google Brain. Um, spectral normalization, I think that's the one that was that achieved state of the art results. Um, GANs trained by two time scale update rules converged mm -hmm. to a local mm -hmm. Nash equi equilibrium. That's the paper that proposed based the um, the two learning rates for, for for G and D and also for uh, they they invented uh, Fraser inception score. Uh, in, uh, friction inception distance on that paper. And finally, the second to last pa paper is a um, is where this this attention mechanism comes from. So uh, mm -hmm. they claim that they they call their technique non non local neural networks, and they claim that self attention or intra attention is basically a special case to to to, to their models. So it's, it's in a way a broader generalization of what self attention is doing. Uh, when applied to, to, to images. And finally, CGANs with project discrimination, I included it here because uh, the, uh, they're comparing that with the state of our results. So the, the first row is, is, is sort of like a bunch of other techniques applied without spectral normalization. Second row is with spectral normalization, and third row is, is, is their, their pay, uh, the result from their paper. That's all. Yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> question, yeah, sorry. We can clap first. Uh, if, if you go several slides back, um, I just had a question I want to create in. Just after the uh, equation slide. The first equation? <laughs> yeah, this one. So one forward? This one. Yeah. So when uh, gamma is initialized at zero, does that mean that you're basically sending the random noise vector directly to the discriminator. 
assume that is that the idea here? It, it's basically saying you pass through this whole structure. That, that's that's my understanding. But you're you putting, you're, you're applying, multiplying zero by O. Uh, so. So this entire thing is is is, is kind of like suppressed. Right. So, so you're just left with the random noise, which was X. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Originally, zero, originally, you yeah. use a convolution in your network. You don't use the attention. Yeah. yeah, XI comes. Oh, sorry, I, I need to clarify. This is XI the noise vector? That's, I guess that's why. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. XI is is abstractly. It can be any part, like if you have two layers in your, in your network. XI can be the inputting here. So it's 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 like abstract construct. So XI can be features from a comp net, or it can be input directly. It depends on where you put attention. Well, the, the plastic block. I think what we're looking at here is only the attention mechanism. Not right. shown is that there are also convolutional layers interspersed that perform the standard image manipulation. Understand? Oh, okay. Yeah, we still need a, a convolution. This is basically inserted into convolutional layer. The entire thing is still the base is still the comp the comp mm -hmm. I guess in your in your table of results, you also showed what's the effect of putting this in different layers of your content, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one. Like this one, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so for FID, FID lower is better. So they seem to find that if you put it at, f at the uh, mid to high le level, feed 32, so it, it gets the best results. What, what the, the feed 32, what 32 means? 32 layer? Feature. I think 32 is the... Okay, if you if you do comp, actually I don't know. Actually, but I don't. Did did it mention? Did people mention? Uh, I don't remember. Sorry. Yes. It's probably layer in the convolution in your your kind of style. Yeah, but um, what what the number accumulates? So does that mean uh, what does that number represent? A number of filters. Mm -hmm. That's what number I of filters. That's what I mean. Pro probably yeah. yes. That would be my guess, because it gets bigger as you go higher and higher. Mm 